Hello folks, my name is Jeffrey Bale, the call sign is NT1K and today I'm going to show you how I built the aluminum open stub J pole. We're going to be using just regular tools that you might have in your toolbox and it's uh, I think it's quite simple to build. We're going to be using inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum angle with 3 8 round aluminum rod. We're going to be, uh, for our tools, we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using tapping dies to tap the 3 8 rod. I have a 3 8 24 and a 3 8 16. And the uh, 16 and 24 is how many threads are per inch. The fine, uh, the 24 is a thinner thread and the 16 is of a more coarse thread. The reason why I'm using two different tapping dies is because of this SO239 connector that you can buy at Radio Shack. It uses a finer thread and uh, when it comes to threading these aluminum rods you want one of them to match the thread that's in this one so that's what the Dash 24 is for and then the the nuts that I bought the 3 8 nuts for the other elements uh, I use Dash 16 threads so we need a different we need a different th uh, a pitch for a thread we're going to be also using um, drill bits here. We're going to use a uh, just a little drill bit here to pilot for pilot drilling, make the holes. Then we're going to enlarge them to three eighths, and then one hole we're going to enlarge to in half inch for this uh, for this plastic O-ring here to separate the uh, for this plastic O-ring here. So other tools we 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 have are uh, we have a drill, you know, just a handheld drill, hammer. And a sawzall. I don't. I don't even have a vice. All I have is this little vice right here. So, <laughs> so um, we're gonna do this as uh, quick and dirty as possible. It's not the best way of doing it, but it will get the job done and it will make a functional dual band antenna. So we're gonna get started by laying out the aluminum angle here. If you go to nt1k.com and search for JPO, you will find a blueprint on there. And it'll show you exactly what you need to do. I already cut the angle down to the five and a half inches it required. So what we're going to do now is measure and lay out the holes. So uh, let's get going with that. Okay, now I got the piece secured in my my vice here, my little my little vice here. We're going to mark out the hole locations for to where we're going to start drilling holes. So we have our inch and a half angle by inch and a half. And what I want to do is find the center line, going or get the center line shown going down here. So what I'm going to do is take a tape measure since half of one inch, uh, I'm sorry, half of an inch and a half is three quarters of an inch or 0.750. We're going to mark down this uh, angle here at in a couple inch intervals here three quarters all the way down and go, there we go three marks will do and then I'm going to take a straight edge place it on those three marks and score my line with a marker here doesn't have to be exact so now we got one direction now we not got to go the other direction and according to the blueprint we got to start off, we, it's good to start from one side and work your way, like a, a common point. So this would be like zero or something. You, it's a good to start from one edge and work your way instead of trying to work your way from both edges because in case you cut this too long or too short, um, if you work from both edges, you could end up having a, uh, a wrong antenna. I'm not sure the how tight the tolerances have to be with this antenna, but we're going to start in measuring a half inch. I'm going to make a mark at the half inch point. And then we need to make a mark at one and seven eighths. So make a mark here. And then we need to make a mark at the five inch at the five inch point. Let's try to do this in the view of the camera. So now I have all my center points or these crosses, each a center point where we are going to drill holes. What we're going to do now is start to drill the holes after we mark 
mark the uh, with a with a uh, with a prick punch. We're gonna mark the, the center points. So we're gonna line it up as good as we can. Just give it a little a little hit with the hammer. Get our second point. Hit with the hammer. We'll move it in our vise. I'm sure you'll have a much bigger vise or some kind of clamping system. And that now we can start drilling. So I'm going to start off with this uh, with this small pilot bit, and we're going to pilot pilot the holes. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the angle ready for drilling, and we're going to drill the first set of pilot holes. I'm just using any type of drill bit, and uh, with the the prick punches allows the drill bit to set right where I want the drill. And all you gotta do is just drill. It's good to use uh, proper safety precautions. So there's our first, till, uh, first hole. Here's our second hole. for our, our third hole. I'm going to turn this around for the camera. And there we go. Now we can open these holes up to the right hole sizes. This hole is going to be 3 8 This hole will be also 3 8 And this hole will be a half inch because that is how the SO239 is going to plug in. Um, I also sort of did this backwards. <laughs> but it will still work. The antenna will still work as long as it has the proper spacings. So uh, I'm going to open up these holes. And we'll get back to you. Okay, we got the holes drilled open, so we got that at 3 8 that's also at 3 8 and we got the one at the edge here, that's close to, closer to the, uh, the 3 8 uh, we got this to a half inch. So there's a little bit of a burr on them from the drilling process, so if you happen to have a, a nice countersinking bit, I would hit each hole just a, just a little bit with the countersinking bit to clear the burr out. Oop. That way it's nice and smooth and doesn't cut you and stuff like that. So let's do this to the, the back side here. I'm just going to quickly... Oh, there's a big burr on the back side. Clean this burr up. As well as this burr. Before you go any further, you want to take your SO your your SO239 connector off and you want to take the plastic bushing that comes with it and it's, see there's a little shoulder there you want to make sure it seats flush in with the angle nice and flush because this is what separates the driven I would well I would want to say the driven element to the rest and if you notice there's a step a shoulder on this that will go into here so as a matter of fact we can we can assemble that right now. So if we put that in, screw this together, and there we go. We'll give it a little tight with the wrench here. Of course, you dropping the wrench doesn't really help. So let's give it a little tight in here, and there we go. We got our mount made. Now we got to move on to making the elements. We'll be right back for that.
Okay, so we have the element up on our up in the vise right now, and we got to measure the element and mark it for cutting. So the first element is 6.688 inches. So that's closer to six and three quarters or 6.75. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna take our element here, and we're gonna measure in six and three quarters inches and make a mark right there and then what I'm going to do is move the element just outside of the and I'm going to saw cut it using my sawzall and I'm going to also repeat that for the 18.625 element and the 57.938 element I like to cut them a little bit longer to so I can in case I have to grind them or deburr them and stuff like that so I'm going to cut these elements and I will get right back to you Okay, now that I got all the three rods cut, I got the, the small, the medium right here, and the large over here. We're going to start, oh, hey, it rolled right to me. Uh, we're going to start threading them. And um, with the sh very short element and the very long element, I'm going to add th three quarters or 0.75 inches of three sixteenths thread. And the medium one, which is really going to be going into this one right here the medium size one we need to make this thread 3 8 24 because of the see if I can get it zoomed in here correctly uh, there's a very fine thread inside this connector if you have a different connector that has a different uh, a different thread pay attention to exactly what thread that is but in this case it's a 3 8 24 so I have an additional 3H24 die that we're gonna thread these with. So what I'm gonna do now is mark this up. We're gonna mark three quarters of the thread on these on these two. So I'm just gonna put a little reference mark. It's no big deal. It's more for aesthetics. So if you go past it, it's it's, it's not the end of the world. It's it's just to make it look a little bit better, I guess. So I got some lubricant I'm going to put onto the uh, onto the uh, part here. It's not really cutting lubricant, but and there goes my my die. And uh, we're going to start uh, we're going to start threading these threading these holes here. So. We're gonna Since aluminum soft, it, it cuts really easy. It's it's not like uh, hardened steels or anything like that. So you're just gonna you just put this on and you start turning, and uh, you'll get your threads. So we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back once I get all these threaded. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting the final final thread done and uh, Well, it's not that easy When you're cutting 3 8 thread into 3 8 aluminum by hand, it's it's a little tough But I'm right now cutting the driven element I would so to speak or the fine thread 3 8 24 and I'm just finishing it up and what I like to do is back off go forward and back off again and I also have a pair of vice grips here gripping the uh, element with some with a paper towel or something to keep it from marking up. Okay, now that we got all the elements uh, threaded, the short stub here gets the 3816 thread. The medium sized stub, which is, we can call it the driven element, that's going to hook right into the SO239. That gets a much finer thread, so I put the, if I can get into focus here, a 3 8 24 thread, and our 60 or 58 inch piece here 
gets the uh, 3 to 24 so now that we got the elements cut and threaded we got our holes drilled in the angle we got our SO239 connector installed at this point I would I, I would uh, try to also drill the holes I'd probably take this off first uh, the SO the, the SO239 connector and drill your holes for your clamps for whatever mast you're going to do it, it varies it depending on the clamp you buy some people buy muffler clamps um, some people will go to the local box store and buy and buy clamps and I'm not sure what size you're going to use so I'm not going to put them in on this video here so but let's get the let's get this uh, started so first thing you want to do is take a 3 8 nut put it on thread it all the way onto the onto the element since this is the longest one it goes to the furthest outside so we're going to slide it on here and put the other nut on you could use washers if you want lock washers but I feel that these two jam nuts will do just fine and we got our our uh, oops wrong one our second element here with the 3 8 uh, 16 thread we're gonna put a nut on here get that good and slide it through here and put the other nut on here I would advise against using Loctite unless you have a Loctite that's uh, that has some kind of uh, some kind of con conductive th thread lock, which you can't really get at a normal store. So, all right, so we got the um, one of the reflectors. I wouldn't. I'm not sure if I want to say a reflector, but I got one of the elements, the longest element, sort of hand tight. I got the. I want to say maybe the UHF element, nice and tight. Or I guess not that tight, huh? And now we're going to thread in the driven element, if you want to call it that, since it's the finer thread. We'll get it in there. And uh, all you gotta do now is just take your wrench and and uh, or two wrenches, and you want to tighten everything up. Since it's aluminum, I wouldn't really go that tight. But since you are gonna be most likely installing it somewhere, you would probably want it to be as tight as you can get it. So. And there we go. And I'd probably take a pair of vice grips with some some vice grips here and give that a little snug. Make sure everything's snug. And there we go. We have a, a we have a completed J pole antenna. It wasn't bad. Most of the work is probably in uh, in threading the the rods. So that's how you build one. It's not too bad and it will, it's a decent antenna. It will work okay for your needs. And uh, thank you for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe and visit my website at www.nt1k.com where you can get the uh, blueprints and other projects I, I have done. Thank you for watching.